Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Gold and Elliott Wave Stock Market with your US Soil S&P 500 and Gold Analysis. I'll present the oil analysis first. It looks like we have a high in place for oil and a new downward trend. My analysis expects it's going to be a long-term trend. The target for now is at 13.39, but as we get closer toward the end of the structure, the target will probably be changing. I'll reanalyze it when I can calculate it at a lower degree. For the very short term, look out for a bounce early next week. It might turn up. It should not make a new high above 66.65 if my main wave count is correct and it may present an opportunity to join a new long-term downward trend at a very good price. It's essential that you always practice good risk management. This is the strongest piece of trading advice that I will give. I have two golden rules for risk management. Always, always trade with stops. Trading without stops exposes all of the equity in your account to risk. Invest only 1-5% to of equity on any one trade using simple maths, or not so simple, but using maths, the theory of runs, that allows your account to sustain a series of losses 10 in a row and still live to trade another day. Let's have a look at the Elliott Wave Analysis for oil first and Classic Analysis last. I've got two wave counts for oil. This is a very bearish wave count. It's my main preferred wave count. And then I have a bullish alternate to present after this. They both see the end of a super cycle first wave here and this first wave count sees a zigzag incomplete for super cycle 2 subdividing at cycle degree 5, 3, 5 with cycle C an incomplete 5 wave impulse beginning here subdividing primary 1, primary 2 a deep zigzag, primary 3 a very good looking impulse, primary 4 deep zigzag oh sorry a relatively shallow zigzag shallow in relation to primary three that is it's less than half the length of primary three so technically it's on the shallow side exhibiting only a little bit of alternation with the zigzag of primary two Zip, primary two is a lot deeper there's almost perfect proportion between them primary four is 23 months in duration primary two is 22 months and that proportion gives this wave count a very good look Primary 4 has slightly overshot the upper edge of this teal channel. It's drawn using Elliott's technique around a zigzag from the start of A to the end of B with a copy on the end of A. It doesn't perfectly show where price has found support and resistance. Resistance was overshot here, touched several times here, breached support and then price moved back below the channel and strongly lower. And so a little overshoot here at the end of primary four is entirely acceptable with price behavior around this trend line. If primary four does continue any higher, it may not move into wave one price territory above 74.96. This is one of the best things about Elliott Wave. You can have very clear and specific price points, which if they are breached by any amount at any time frame, even on a tick chart by one tick, invalidates your wave count. No part of primary four at any time frame may move into primary one price territory. If we see a new high by any amount at any time frame above this price point, this wave count will be invalid at all time frames and the alternate would then be confirmed. Let's have a look at the weekly chart, the level structure of primary four with primary three down here. Is this point down here primary four subdivides as a zigzag five three five i know a b wave is a triangle sorry it subdivides into five ways we just classify it as a three or rather a corrective structure it's a complete structure here intermediate c is a complete five wave structure we've got a nice bearish engulfing candlestick at the weekly chart level giving us a bit of confidence that we may have a high in place I'm calculating, calculating a target for now at primary degree. Primary 5 will reach 0.618, the length of primary 3 at 13.39. If primary 5 were to reach only the most common ratio with primary 1, that of equality, it would be substantially truncated. If it were to reach 1.618, the length of primary 1, it would be too long. And so I'm using the next ratio in the sequence. 0.618 the length of primary three but it's not really a very common ratio for a fifth wave to exhibit and so when primary five has intermediate waves one two three and four complete within it then I can calculate a target at a lower degree and hopefully have a little bit more accuracy so toward the end of this bearish move if this wave counts correct this target will change 
Let's take a look now at the daily chart where the end of intermediate B triangle is this point down here. Here's intermediate wave C which sits very nicely in a narrow best fit channel which was clearly breached Thursday Friday with downward movement and that was what I was looking for to provide some confidence that we have a high in place and so we can now have some confidence in this wave count. We can have more confidence, a reasonable amount if we see a new low at any time frame by any amount below 55.24 because that's the point at which the alternate bullish wave count would be invalidated at the daily chart level. Again that's a nice thing about Elliott Wave. You can use Elliott Wave rules to give you these invalidation or confidence points. If primary 4 is over here then primary wave 5 may only subdivide as a 5 wave structure. There are only two options open for it, either an ending diagonal or an impulse. It's more likely to be an impulse because they are more common than diagonals. So far there should be a 5 down at the daily chart level developed, that's incomplete. We may have 1, 2, 3 might be over here, could move a little bit lower. 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory so an upcoming bounce may very well remain below this price point on this daily candlestick, it's low right here. However there's more than one way to label the start of this downward movement, it could be 1, 2, 1, 2. And we could have had a 3-4 in here and so this could possibly be the price point that may not be breached. There's quite a few different ways to see this on the hourly chart and 5 minute chart level. Either way we don't have a 5 down complete yet and when it is complete we'll be looking for a deeper bounce for a second wave correction which may not move beyond the start of the first wave above 66.65. I would not expect it to get up that high though, I wouldn't expect it to be too deep because I would expect in the short term let's look for resistance about the lower edge of this yellow best fit channel. My classic analysis is expecting a bounce is quite likely next week and if that does eventuate then look out for resistance at this trend line in the first instance. That may be where a bounce comes to end and price may react quite strongly downward from there. Primary wave 5 would be most likely to move at least slightly below the end of primary 3 at 26.86 to avoid a truncation. This is a very bullish wave count still seeing super cycle wave 2 as a zigzag 5, 3, 5. It could be complete if cycle C begins here rather than here. If it begins here as you can see now it's a nice 5 wave impulse. In order for cycle B to end here rather than here we have to see a running contracting triangle within it for primary wave B. It's a 9 wave triangle, not a very common type but the subdivisions all fit. This looks pretty good. There is actually no truncation for the end of primary C, it has moved well beyond the end of primary A. That's the definition for a truncation, it's where C ends in relation to A, not where C ends in relation to price extremes of the B wave just prior to it. If we have a complete zigzag over here then oil may be in a new bull market starting off a bit slowly, that's okay. Bull markets can start off a bit slowly for commodities, they usually end with strong blow off tops and they start usually quite slowly. If this is the case then we've got 1, 2 and now a third wave beginning up, the low down here, this point down here, here's the start of this possible bull market, impulse for 1, zigzag for 2, impulse for intermediate 1, double zigzag for intermediate 2, intermediate 3 could now be complete, this downward movement last week could be the start of intermediate or early stage of intermediate 4 which may not move into wave 1 price territory below 55.24 and that's why this is the price point which differentiates the two wave counts at the daily chart level and to the upside this is the price point which differentiates them at all time frames. The target for primary 3 assumes the most common ratio of 1.618 the length of primary wave 1. Ok let's move on to classic analysis. At the monthly chart level here we've got a continuation pattern, 3 advancing white soldiers, it's been followed now by another 2 months of good strong upward movement, this month here ending with a long upper wick and so that looks a little bit bearish. The thing about candlestick continuation patterns as they tell you the trend is likely to continue but they make absolutely no comment on how long or how far that trend may go, it certainly could be over here despite the continuation pattern here. I can't make a comment on this candlestick for February because we're only just over a week into February.
There was some support for upward movement at the close of January session. MACD was bullish and on balance volume was very bullish and RSI allowed that there was room for price to rise. Let's look at the shorter term picture at the daily chart level which is looking at least for the short term a bit more bearish. At the high we had double divergence between price and stochastics and stochastics was overbought and so we did expect some downward movement. It's starting to show some support from volume. That's good to see. That supports the wave count. ADX at the high was very extreme. It was above 35 and above both directional lines, telling us that this upward trend, sorry, upwards trend was very extreme. So some reaction or consolidation was a reasonable expectation. We're getting some downward movement now. ATR is starting to strongly increase to support this new movement. We may be seeing a return of volatility to this market after quite low ATR for quite a while. We've got a weak bearish signal here from on balance volume with a break below support. It's weak because this trend line was only just able to be drawn across two points. Hence it's a weak signal, but it is a bearish signal. And I will give that some weight because these signals from on balance volume are often quite reliable when you use them with trend lines. RSI is nearing oversold, but not there yet. And for oil, when it has a strong bearish trend, it can remain extreme actually, oversold RSI for quite a while. So RSI moving into oversold and when it gets there it's pretty close. When it does get there it doesn't mean that downward movement has to end. However these three candlesticks, particularly these last two, have rather long lower wicks and so that is looking a bit bullish. It looks like we should look out possibly for a little bit of a bounce. If we do see a bounce, first resistance above now is at 61.70. Stochastics is oversold and there's single day divergence with price. From this point to this point, price made a new low, but stochastics did not. And so this tells us that there's a little bit of weakness in Friday's downward movement. That, along with the lower wick, long lower wick, does signal a possible bounce coming up sooner rather than later next week. Bollinger Bands now starting to widen as price continues lower, supports the downward trend. We've got this very strong upper spike on volatility, on the volatility index for crude oil. That's bearish for volatility, which should be interpreted as bullish for price for US oil. That in conjunction with this work on price again tells me it's likely we may be looking for a bounce earlier rather than later next week. Prices at support, and so for the short term, I'll be looking first for a new high above 132781, and then a breach of the yellow best fit channel on the hourly chart, and then I will have confidence that the downward swing is over, and we'll be looking at a new upward swing within a consolidation. But if the downward swing does continue, the next target for support would be 1286. While price remains within that yellow channel on the hourly chart, the bottom line is we have to accept the risk that the low may not yet be in place. I'm publishing two weekly charts, this rather bullish weekly chart and a much more bearish weekly chart. I have five wave counts at the weekly chart level and I encourage members, if you're new especially, to click on the link at the beginning of every text article every day back to the last published historic analysis to have a look at all the alternates that I've published. I'm only going to publish two on a daily basis, one bull and one bear, to make the analysis manageable for me to do and digestible for you to read and understand. That's the idea anyway. I'm seeing this wave count, an end of an A wave here and the start of a B wave at cycle degree. Cycle degree waves should last one to several years, so the duration here looks about right. This first idea looks at cycle wave B as a single zigzag subdividing five, three, Five primary C this needs to be a five wave structure. It can only, within a zigzag, it can only be an impulse or an ending diagonal and all of this overlapping so far indicates an ending diagonal looks very likely. Within an ending diagonal all of the subwaves must be zigzags and four must overlap one. In order for other analysts to know it's a diagonal that your wave count intends you should put the trend lines on it. This is an ending expanding diagonal. Three is longer than one, four is longer than two, and the trend lines diverge. For an ending expanding diagonal, five needs to be longer than three, 
at 1398.41, five would reach equality in length with three, so it has to end above that point. Five of the cis ending diagonal for primary C, intermediate five needs to be a needs to be a zigzag, zigzag subdivide 5, 3, 5, and within it, minor wave B is showing up at the weekly chart level. Here, minor wave B lasted a Fibonacci 8 weeks, and here, minor wave B lasted 12 weeks, just one short of a Fibonacci 13. And so, within intermediate wave 5, we're expecting 5 to be longer than 3 in length, and so it's quite likely to be longer in duration, which means that within it, minor wave B may very well be as long lasting as minor wave B within intermediate wave 3, and here it could even be longer lasting. If this was 12 weeks, let's look for a Fibonacci 13 weeks at, for our first expectation for the dura duration of this minor degree B wave. Within the zigzag of intermediate 5, minor B may not move beyond the start of A, below 1236.54, sorry, below 1236.54, but if it gets down that low, it should find pretty good support at the 2-4 trend line. Diagonals normally adhere very well to their trend lines. There are a couple of small overshoots here, that's okay. There are no proper breaches. Let's have a look at my intermediate 5 at the daily chart level with the end of 4. The low down here is this point down here. So far, intermediate 5 looks like it's unfolding as a zigzag, 5, and complete 3, and then we'll expect a 5 up. From this high to this low, we may have a complete zigzag. Now, we could move the degree of labelling up here, here, up 1 degree. We could see minor wave B over here, and I do have an alternate at the hourly chart level that will look at that possibility, but it's the second alternate that's judged today to have the lowest probability. It is possible. Well, many, many things are possible. We have to rank all the different possibilities in order of probability. That's the general idea with Elliott Wave Analysis. What I think is much more likely in order for minor B to have a reasonable duration at the daily and weekly chart level is for it to continue further. And so it may have started out with a zigzag for minute A or W. We'll be looking at a B or X wave up and a C or Y wave down or sideways. This chart is allowing for still multiple structural possibilities here for minor wave B. There are more than 23 possible structures that a B wave can take, and at this early stage within minor wave B, we can at this point eliminate none of those possibilities. We have to be open to them all, and so I'm going to be working with alternates, and I'm going to be using and probably changing my labelling at hourly chart levels fairly regularly as it continues. Minor wave B would most likely at this stage be a flat combination or triangle if this analysis of a 3 down here is correct. It could also be a double zigzag. Flats and combinations and triangles are all sideways movements, but double zigzags have a strong slope against the prior trend. If minor B is a flat or a triangle, then its A wave subdivides as a 3, its B wave has to be a 3 wave structure and would be most likely very deep, there's a minimum requirement for a flat correction of 90% the length of the A wave, but there's no minimum requirement for a B wave within a triangle, it only needs to be a 3 wave structure. If minor wave B is a combination, then we would have a zigzag for the first structure in a double. It would be labelled minute wave W. The double would be joined by a 3 in the opposite direction labelled X. And X waves within combinations are usually quite deep because combinations are sideways movements. And in order to achieve that sideways range bound look, the X waves are a good swing from support to resistance or in a bull market, sorry, in a bear market in the other direction. But if minor wave B is going to be a double zigzag, the first zigzag and the double may be complete here, labelled minute wave W, and then the X wave would be expected to be relatively brief and shallow, and then the Y wave may move price down to the 0 0.618 Fibonacci, relatively, Fibonacci ratio well, relatively quickly. That's because double zigzags, like single zigzags, should have a strong slope against the prior trend. In order to achieve a strong slope, the X waves are almost always brief and shallow, but particularly almost always shallow. And so although this arrow outlines one possible pathway, it's looking at a flat correction, a 335 for minor B, that is not the only pathway minor B may un undertake, and this analysis of minor B as it continues further will change.
this is the bearish idea at the weekly chart level now instead of cycle b as a zigzag i'm looking at it as a possible flat correction subdividing three three five within a flat correction primary b needs to be a minimum 0.9 length of primary a at 1079.13 or below primary b itself looks like it could be unfolding as a regular flat correction subdividing three three Five. The only problem with this wave count is the rarity of a triple zigzag. In my now 10 years of daily Elliott wave analysis, I think I've only seen two before. This, if this wave count turns out to be correct, this would be the third. They are very, very rare structures, rarer than running flats. This wave count expects a big five wave structure down. A new low below 1236.54 would invalidate bullish wave counts at the weekly chart level and add some confidence to this very bearish wave count at the weekly chart level. What about classic analysis this week? How is the week closed? On the weekly chart level we've got some resistance about 1345, further resistance higher up about 1375. Price is swinging from resistance to support and back again and we can use, because price is range bound, we can use stochastics to assist to tell us when one swing may end and the next may begin. So as price moves up to resistance and stochastics is overbought, we expect a downward swing until stochastics is oversold and price reaches down to support. Here price has reached up to resistance and we've got a long upper wick on this candlestick. Now that classic approach would be expecting a downward swing and for price to move down to support which is about 1305 to 1310 in the first instance and further below that about 1225 and for that downward swing to not end until stochastics had found had reached oversold. However at this stage we now have ADX telling us that there may be a downward trend in place well that would expect also a continuation of downward movement and stochastics to remove sorry to continue now from overbought to move lower. But in the first instance price is finding strong support here about 1305 to 1310 and downward movement now for the second week in a row does not have good support from volume. Price is at support and on balance volume is also at support so in order for the view of a downward swing continuing here to lower support and to see stochastics oversold in order for that view to be prevalent we really do need to see price break through support here and on balance volume break through support here. In the first instance let's look for an upward bounce it may be short lived and it may find resistance about 1345 let's look for an upward bounce within the larger downward swing about here price does often react from the support area support and resistance area. Over the long term ATR continues to decline quite strongly for many many months now over a year that supports the idea still of a B wave unfolding at cycle degree that's normal for a B wave to show that kind of weakness. What about the short term picture? Here it looked like we had a blow off top and now here with the long lower wick support at the midterm Fibonacci 55 day moving average and about 1310 it looks like we may have a low in place at least for the short term. Friday session had a slightly higher high and a higher low the definition of upward movement but the balance of volume was down and the candlestick closed red. During the session there was not good support from volume for downward movement so I'm interpreting this as bullish. On balance volume here is close to support, price is close to support, I'm expecting an upward bounce at least for the short term is fairly likely and that supports the Elliott wave analysis. RSI here is neutral, there's plenty of room for price to rise or fall, stochastics has reached oversold at the daily chart level while price is at support as well, let's expect an end to the downward swing and an upward bounce that looks quite likely. At the daily chart level ADX reached very extreme for the last upward swing and now it's declining telling us that price may be consolidating. It's just told us we might have had a trend change from up to down but with the black ADX line at this time frame still consolidating it does not tell us that we have a new downward trend. It is a lagging indicator. It's based on a 14 day average here. ATR for the short term is now starting to show some increase but for the long term at the weekly chart level it's still 
strongly declining in MACD bearish, that's a lagging indicator as well. Let's have a look at GDX just at the weekly chart level because when we zoom back there's this very very strong support line here, it's been tested here since price moved into this consolidation or congestion zone at least one, two, three, four, five, possibly six times and if we look at it at the daily chart level probably more often. This is a very very strong support zone, the more often a support area or resistance area is tested and holds, the stronger support or resistance at that area becomes. This is now very strong. This week we've got a long lower wick that's very bullish, it's right at support, look out for a bounce. Downward movement does have some support from volume though. If we're going to expect more downward movement we really do need to wait for a downward breakout below the support at 20.80 on a downward on a strong downward day and if it has support from volume with an increase in volume at the daily chart level that would add more confidence to a downward breakout but for a downward breakout it's not necessary whereas for an upward breakout it is. ADX at the weekly chart level is increasing this week telling us there's a downward trend in place. ATR starting to show some increase so we should look out and be alert for the possibility of a downward breakout. But prices at support and on balance volume also here at the weekly chart level is at support. So at least in the first instance look out for an upward swing now to see price move up to resistance, maximum resistance about 25.50 and an upward swing. Stochastics has returned from overbought so there is again room for price to either fall or rise. It looks like we may have a low in place, price has bounced up very strongly from the 200 day simple moving average, we've got a very long lower wick and we've got bullishness on technical analysis charts. However while price remains within the yellow channel on my hourly chart the risk will remain that a low may not be in place and you must adjust to that risk accordingly. If price breaks above the upper edge of that channel and it's very close by now then you may have some more confidence that a low may be in place. The target for the next big interruption to the trend is now at 3020. Let's take a step back again and look at the monthly chart because we've got this big monthly candlestick. Now this is so far February and we're only a few days or one week into February even if this monthly candlestick closes green it's going to have a very long lower wick and so I'm going to now label this intermediate wave 4. At the monthly chart level I see a super cycle fourth wave over here at the end of the global financial crisis or credit crunch, this is a low of March 2009 and the start of a multi year bull market which will be moving and it was now in its ninth year. So super cycle wave 5 has to unfold as a 5 wave structure, it may only be an ending diagonal or an impulse and very obviously there is not enough overlapping for a diagonal, the structure is an impulse and so so far at the monthly chart level it has a pretty good look as a 5 wave impulse. I have cycle 1 over here, it ended with a little bit of a truncation, cycle 2, cycle 3 has no adequate Fibonacci ratio to cycle 1, cycle 4 exhibits alternation between the zigzag of cycle 2, cycle 4 subdivides as a combination. Importantly it overshoots the lower edge of this Elliott channel and price quickly returned back up to within the channel. Cycle 5 begins here and now at the monthly chart level it's starting to have a pretty good look as a 5 wave impulse. It's subdividing as an impulse not a diagonal, so far within the impulse we have 1, 2, 1, 2 and now 3, 4, I'll be expecting if this wave count is correct we should have the end of primary 3, another big correction for primary 4 and then a final fifth wave up for primary 5. I've got two targets on my monthly and weekly charts but the lower target now is looking to be too low. Cycle wave 5 has passed equality in length with cycle wave 1, the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence is 1.618 the length of cycle 1 which would be achieved at 2926 but that doesn't now look like it's going to allow enough room for upward movement to continue and the structure to completely unfold. And so we may look at the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence, cycle 5 would exhibit 2.618 the length of cycle 1, about 3616. 
For the short term, this pullback, which I am now labelling Intermediate Wave 4, if it were to continue further, and it could, it can't move into Wave 1 price territory below 2193.81. At this last all-time high, I just want to draw your attention to RSI, at the last all-time high there is absolutely no divergence at the monthly chart level between this high and in RSI and the high in price. Now that's absolutely fine, but what it means is it looks, from a technical perspective, unlikely that this is the end of the bull market because bull markets most often, not always, but most often, almost always, do exhibit some divergence at higher time frames with RSI in price as they move toward the final high. OK, let's take a look now at the weekly chart. We're going to look only at cycle wave 5 with the end of the combination for cycle 4. There's this point down here, cycle 5 is extending, it's past equality in length for cycle 1, that was about 2,500. When we got up to that point, the structure was incomplete and price just kept on going up, so I'm using the next Fibonacci ratios in the sequence. Cycle 5 unfolding as an impulse, now it looks like we've got primary 1 and 2, primary 3 may still be incomplete, and it may only unfold as an impulse, it looks like we've got intermediate 1, intermediate 2, a deep double zigzag, intermediate 3, ended with a strong fifth wave, a little bit more typical of a commodity than the S&P. It's a little bit unusual for the S&P to behave like this, but sometimes it does. A quick, sharp zigzag for intermediate wave 4. There is some alternation. This looks like a sharp downward movement and this, even though it subdivides best as a double zigzag, looks more like a sideways movement. So there is some alternation, although they're both of the zigzag family. And After last analysis, I adjusted the channel around this upward movement. I'm drawing this as a best fit channel from this price point here, the end of primary one, to this price point here, the end of minor one, and placing a copy on the low here of intermediate two nicely shows where primary two found support and now intermediate four may have found support very very slightly above that trend line. The long lower wick on this weekly candlestick is quite bullish. If intermediate four continues further it can't move intermediate into intermediate one price territory. Let's take a look now at the daily chart. We're going to look at all of the end of intermediate three from the low of minor two down here this point down here, here's the end of intermediate 3 and I'm leaving the Fibonacci ratios on this wave count at this stage so, so we can see that it has some adequate Fibonacci ratios. It's really typical for the S&P to exhibit Fibonacci ratios between two of its three actionary waves within an impulse and not very common actually for it to exhibit Fibonacci ratios between all three actionary waves within its impulse. Here's the end of the impulse for intermediate 3. The actionary waves within intermediate 3 are minor waves 1, which is off to the left of the chart, minor 3 and minor 5. Actionary waves carry price in the trend direction. There's no ratio between 3 and 1, but there's a good ratio here between 5 and 1. So that's a pretty typical pattern for the S&P. The absence of a ratio between 3 and 1 is not a detractor for this wave count. This is pretty normal behaviour for this market. Within the impulse of minor 3 again, there's a ratio between 3 and 1 and no ratio between 5 and either of 1 or 3, again quite normal. If intermediate 3 is over here, then it exhibits no Fibonacci ratio to intermediate wave 1. What that means now is it's quite likely that intermediate 5 may exhibit a Fibonacci ratio to either of intermediate 3 or 1. Were it to reach only a quality in length with intermediate wave 1, it would be hugely truncated. Let's not ex expect that. That would be quite unusual, has a low probability. Were it to reach only 1.618 the length of intermediate wave 1, it would also be slightly truncated. So I'm using a next Fibonacci ratio, a ratio between intermediate 5 and 3. 0.618 the length of 3 would be achieved at 3020. At the weekly chart level, this wave count comes with a very, very strong caveat that it's my judgment that it has an extremely low probability. If we have an end to the bull market and the start of a huge bear market, this wave count expects that the new bear market for grand super cycle wave 2 may last about, a, probably about at least 20 years and might even last a whole generation. 
Green Super Cycle Wave 2 would be expected to end substantially below 666.79, the end of the global financial crisis. It should end well below that point. It would be in the very, very early stages. However, while price remains within this teal channel, we may have no confidence in this wave count. If we see a full weekly candlestick below this trend line and not touching it, then we can have some reasonable confidence that we may have an all-time, well, a high in place that may last possibly a generation. At this very early stage, this wave count has a low probability because at the high, there is, as I showed you on my monthly chart, no divergence between price and RSI. That almost never happens for the start of a bear market and also at this all-time high there is zero divergence between price and the AD line which would be if, if this is the end of the bull market that would be the first time that that has it has ended like that with no divergence with the AD line in nearly a hundred years because it hasn't happened in nearly a hundred years we should assume that it's very unlikely to happen now which is why I judge the wave count to have such a very low probability. But low probability does not mean no probability. As low, as very, very low, the probability is that I judge the wave count to have, we do still need to be aware it is a very slim outside risk and manage accounts accordingly. At the weekly chart level, let's have a look and see how this week's closed. For Friday session, price has bounced up very strongly about the 40 week or 200 day moving average. There's a nice long lower wick. That's very bullish. The bounce up from here is very bullish. Strong support from volume this week for downward movement within the week is quite bearish. On balance volume has not given a bearish signal though. And there's a little bit more room for it to move lower before it finds support at this yellow trend line. This yellow trend line has some reasonable technical significance. This pullback has brought RSI down from extremely overbought now well into neutral territory. There is again quite a lot of room for price now to rise again. ADX had been very extreme for quite a long time for many weeks. It's now declining indicating either a consolidation or pullback or possibly the end of the trend. It's telling us there is now possibly a change in the trend at the weekly chart level from up to down but because the black ADX line is still declining it doesn't tell us there is a new downward trend. It is a lagging indicator. It is based upon 14 week averages. At the weekly chart level we've got a bearish crossover from MACD. That's happened before and it didn't mean the end of the bull market. It could just mean that we have had a pullback within the bull market and it doesn't tell us how far or for how long price may fall after the bearish crossover. What about the short term picture at the daily chart level? Here's the 200 day moving average and here's the end of the wick for Friday's candlestick very slightly below this point and a very very strong bounce up off that area and support about 2540. This is not correctly technically a hammer reversal pattern because it's got two greater longer upper wick but the lower wick is I think it's more than three times the size of the real body of this candlestick. This very long lower wick is very bullish. Price closed above resistance at 2600 so this area may again now offer support for downward movement. Next resistance about 2670. Friday session had a lower high and a lower low but the balance of volume for Friday was upward and the candlestick has closed green and so there is support from volume within Friday session for upward movement within that session. I am interpreting this as bullish. ADX is still increasing telling us there may still be a downward trend in place. This is a lagging indicator here based on a 14 day moving average. This pullback brought ADX down from very extreme at both daily and weekly time frames. ADX declined and now it's increasing telling us there may be a downward trend at this time. 
ATR is rising as price has fallen. That's pretty normal when the S&P has bearish moves. On balance volume has given weak bearish signals here. This break below support here, because this support line was only just able to be drawn, was a very weak bearish signal. A reaction down from the support line there, another weak bearish signal. There is bullish divergence between lows and price and in price and on balance volume and so overall I'm going to read this as mm, a little bit more neutral really than bearish. These signals are not particularly bearish. RSI reached oversold, moved up to into neutral territory, again slightly further oversold. There is no divergence between price and RSI at these lows. RSI may now return into neutral. There is a little bit of single bullish divergence between price and stochastics at lows however giving a slight bullish signal supporting the idea we may have a low in place but I would have more confidence if we had seen divergence between price and RSI in that bullish signal. So this is a weak signal. When we see the divergence with RSI it can be a little bit more reliable. We do not have that. MACD still bearish again it's based on moving averages Bollinger Bands expanding as price falls, that's really typical behaviour for the S&P. What about inverted VIX, volatility and AD line as a measure of market breadth? This is inverted VIX, for Friday we had a lower high and a lower low, the definition of downward movement, but inverted VIX moved higher. Downward movement during Friday's session was not accompanied by a normal increase in market volatility. Market volatility had declined, remember this is inverted VIX. And so I'm reading this divergence as bullish, supporting the idea that we may see an upward day for Monday and or Tuesday. What about the AD line? Exactly the same. Price has moved lower, the AD line has moved higher, upward movement within Friday's session has support from rising market breadth. I am interpreting this divergence as bullish. This also supports the idea that we are going to see upward movement Monday and or Tuesday. That's all for me at the end of the trading week with your S&P analysis and I hope that all of our members are having a fabulous weekend.